Today we're going to be looking at trade sizes. Uh, we're going to be looking at trade sizes for hollowware and flatware that was used by many of the American pottery companies in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And on the table I have uh, seven sizes of Hudson jugs. And they're noted with their trade sizes. The largest size is a sixes. We go to twelves, twenty-fours, thirties, thirty-sixes, forty-twos, and forty-eights. And you'll notice as I pan back and forth, they vary in size, starting with the largest and moving down to the smallest. But they are referred to as trade sizes with these numbers rather than um, heights or capacities in terms of pints. So what do these trade sizes mean? And most of the information I'm going to give you is, I'm going to paraphrase from the Pottery Industry Report on the Cost of Production in Earthenware in China Industries from 1915. It gives the best description of what these trade sizes mean with respect to hollowware, and then we're going to look at flatware in a moment. Um, because one of the misconceptions about these trade sizes, and right now we're looking at the 24s and 30s jugs, is that, well, if it's called a 24s, that means you can put 24 in a barrel. Or if it's called a 30s, you can put 30 in a barrel. Or a cask, or, or some other, you know, box, or whatever. However the packaging works. That may be true, and I'm not going to argue whether that's true or false. Um, but what I would argue is that it's coincidental. That is not the actual intention of trade sizes. Now, the trade sizes were an import from England, from British potters. And this is how they start. Let's say I can make this size jug, and I can make 12 of them for a dollar. But somebody comes along and says, okay, I like that jug, but I need a smaller size. What can you do if you make a smaller size? And I say, well, okay, well, I can make 24 of these for a dollar. And that would be basically how the trade sizes will work. It's a pricing scale. So you can either make 12 of the larger size for a dollar, or you can make 24 of the smaller size for a dollar. The idea being the raw materials involved, the glaze, the clay, the time it takes to make the smaller jug is less than it makes than it is necessary to make the larger jug. And as you move down in size, well, I can make 30 of these for a dollar, or I can make 36 of these for a dollar, 42 of these for a dollar, or 48 of these for a dollar. Or you can go the opposite direction. You can go increase in size, and now there's six for a dollar. So and you'll notice that everything's in terms of dozen. We have a half dozen, sixes, a dozen, two dozen. There's no 18s. Um, for some reason, and we'll get to that in a minute, that there, we jump from 24s to 30s. So we've got two dozen, two and a half dozen, three dozen, three and a half dozen, and four dozen. And in some cases, you'll find a 54s jug. Hudson didn't have one. Um, Hudson had eight sizes of jugs. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them out. What I'm missing is actually the fours jug, which would be one size higher. So that's how hollowware works. It has nothing really to do with a barrel. Now, for flatware, let's look at this Seneca dinner plate. Well, this would be called a seven inch plate. Um, the problem is it doesn't measure seven inches, although in the trade size it is called a seven inch plate. If we were to measure it, the overall dimension is actually nine and a quarter. So how did they come up with seven inches? How, do, how does that work? Well, let's look at the anatomy of plate first. You've got the, the well, which is the inside circle. You've got this curvature, which is called the ball. And then this line where the ball ends and the rim begins is called the verge. And then you have the rim and then you have the edge. So what, how you get a trade size for flatware is you go from the verge and you go to the opposite edge and you approximate. So in this case it's going to be about seven inches. It's about seven and a half but we call this a seven inch plate even though it measures nine and a quarter. Some potteries instead of calling it a seven inch plate would call it a number seven plate which I prefer but most of them actually call it a seven inch plate. So one of the problems in the 1920s especially is the trade sizes sort of become obsolete. And there's a lot of arguments in trade publications where they call for the abolishment of trade sizes. And the reason being with industrialization and modernization, mechanization, the cost to make this size jug 
as opposed to making this size jug, it's, it's basically the same. It's no longer half. So if you were to look at, like, let's say, a catalog for Hudson, and I'm going to make these numbers up. I mean, I don't know what the exact numbers are offhand. But it might say, okay, you can order a dozen of these for a dollar, or a dozen of these for 70 cents. Where if you were to apply the trade size idea, it should actually be 50 cents for a dozen of these, which would make it work out. The math would work. But what happens is the cost to make the 12s and the 24s are not that dissimilar. And so a lot of you know, salesmen and uh, pottery makers say, you know, we should probably quit. But they didn't. Um, there's two reasons why. One of its habit, it was just used for so many years that uh, it was just a hard habit to break. And the other one has to do with committing to a specific size. Um, we're going to look at two things here. This is a listing of Newell jugs and Empress jugs from the Homer Locken catalogs. And if you'll see, the Newell jugs, the 24s, is 4 pints. An Empress jug, a 24s, is 3 and 3 eighths. So there's no conformity, not only between potteries, but within a pottery with respect to its own shape. But the 24s jug is the most important jug for the shapes that we've examined thus far, from Victor all the way to Trellis. You know, not counting Old Roman, of course. But every shape we've looked at thus far, you're pretty much guaranteed that it's going to have a 24s jug. The 24s jug was as commonplace as a creamer or a sugar or a casserole. Um, but my advice, if you're going to start collecting these, or if you are into collecting this ware, don't get too hung up on these trade sizes. If I have some creamers over here, and if you were to look at these, we have different shapes, different eras, different styles, different sizes, different capacities. You can look at all these creamers and say, those are creamers. There's no question about that. You don't need to measure anything or, you know, investigate or get a ruler out. The same should be true for the 24s jug. The 24s was the most common. Even though I have examples shown here, if you find a jug from one of these, either the fancy embossed shapes or the pre-read shapes or the old ironstone shapes, it's probably going to be a 24s jug. It was just that common. If we look over here, these are all 24s jugs. And looking at this, it should be the same way as looking at the creamers, where you go, oh, those are all 24s jugs. Roughly six inches high, roughly six inches in diameter, three pints to four pints uh, capacity, roughly. Again, it's all approximation. And we have, uh, we've got Republican, Seneca, Virginia, Empress, um, Ohio, Trellis, Angeles, Genesee, Quaker, Hudson, and this is Hotel Ware, a Hallboy jug. So, again, it's not something to get hung up on that, oh, this is a 24s as opposed to a 30s. They're just very common. If you find one, you can pretty much bank that it's going to be a 24s jug. It's the other sizes you really have to worry about. So you might say, well, why didn't they just make them all the same? Why didn't they just say, okay, let's make them all three pints? Or let's make them all four, well, let's say four pints? Or let's make them all five and a half inches tall from table to spout? Why do we have all these different shapes and sizes, but we use the same trade numbers? Well, a lot of it has to do with the overall design of the shape. Let's say we looked at, let's move this aside for a moment. Let's say we looked at this trellis jug and this um, empress jug. The uh, empress jug is on the left, has the bluebirds on it, and on the right is trellis. They are both considered 24s jugs. The empress jug has a capacity of 3 and 3 eighths pints. The trellis jug has a capacity of 4 pints. But they have the overall same shape, just as like we saw with the creamers. They all have the same basic shape that is overall size. So do these jugs. Now, if I were to say, we need to take this Empress jug and make it four pints to match the capacity of the trellis jug, then it's going to become larger. And it's no longer going to be a 24s jug. It's probably going to become a 12s jug. By the same token, if we take the trellis jug and say, well, let's make that three and three eighths pints, it's no longer going to be a 24s jug. It's going to decrease in size, um, and it probably become a 30s jug because they would no longer have their overall shape of height and diameter. Um, but because Empress has this wide base and very narrow neck, it becomes a 24 jugs at uh, 3 and 3 eighths pints, and Trellis is very bulbous. So it becomes a 24 jugs at 4 pints. So that's why you have the difference in capacities 
Um, but again, the takeaway here is if it's roughly this size, then you should automatically go, that's a 24s jug. If you're uncomfortable using trade sizes, you could actually call them lemonade jugs. When these were not part of sets and just sold as one-offs, that's how they were marketed as lemonade jugs. This would have been, this wouldn't have been part of a set. It has a luster trim on it. This was just probably an extra piece. They slapped on some decals and luster and just marketed it as a lemonade jug. Um, so we'll go back over here and look at our trade sizes again for these jugs. Um, again, I'm only showing seven of the eight. The one I'm missing is the fours, but you see, we can also have a nines. A nines would be three and a quarter uh, dozen. The 18s is missing. And the reason why the 18s is missing is because the 24s and 30s are so close that if you had an 18s, the 18s would be confused for the 24. And 18s would be uh, one and a half dozen. You can also have fours, threes, twos, and ones. Your fours would be a third of a dozen, your threes would be a quarter of a dozen, your twos would be a sixth of a dozen, and your ones would be one twelfth of a dozen. So those smaller numbers, one through four, would be reserved for like pedestals, jardiniers, stands, punch bowls, um, larger size pieces um, that would not be in multiple sizes. Now, the one of the reasons why uh, they called for the embellishment was because of the pricing, but also because of the confusion that would arise. Uh, we're going to look at some advertisements. Let me move this over. And here's a Riviera brochure. And you'll see, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but we've got, let me zoom in a little bit here. We've got the 8-inch plate, the 7-inch plate, the five inch plate and the four inch plate. And those of you who collect Riviera know that those are trade sizes, that it's actually closer to 10, nine, um, seven and six. We look at the, the deep plate and it's saying that it's six inches. It's actually closer to eight inches. So are these in trade sizes? So a consumer would have actually gotten one of these pamphlets, a Riviera pamphlets and everything would have been in trade sizes. But if we look at something like this Suntone brochure, which is a little bit later, this is like early 1950s, and I don't know if we can zoom in here. We've got uh, 10 inch plate, nine inch plate, seven inch plate, six inch plate. We've got the, um, let's see, a 15 inch platter, 13 inch platter, 11 inch platter. Everything's closer to the actual size. We have a 15 inch chop plate. So we start to see the trade sizes disappear from the 1930s to the 1950s. We look at this Harlequin brochure. This one comes from uh, the 1950s. And everything's pretty much in regular sizes, 10 inch plate, nine inch plate, eight inch soup plate. So we've got the 13 inch platter, we've got a 5th, 11 inch platter, but we still have a 36's bowl and 36's oatmeal. We've got these trade size designations extending all the way into the 1950s, even though none of the other pieces are in trade sizes. One other thing to look at, we have uh, Majestic, which is made for Woolworths. We have the treatment number is W538. And we have two pieces of ephemera here. This one would have been meant for to be used uh, internally by the Homer Lachlan China Company, so they can have they can see what the uh, pieces are in the assortment. And this one would have been meant for the general public. And it's interesting to look at all these shapes that are wrapped around here on the outside. They're all in trade sizes. We've got the eight-inch plate, the seven-inch plate, six-inch plate, four-inch fruit cup, thirty-sixes bowl, eight-inch dish, and ten-inch dish. But when we look at the one that was meant for the general public, and we flip it over, now we've got regular sizes. We've got 10 and a quarter inch plate, nine and a quarter inch plate, eight and a quarter inch plate. Uh, our platters are now 11 and a half and 15 and a half. Interestingly, the uh, 36's bowl, where is it? Where's the 36's? Bowl, right there, pint. So it doesn't even call it a 36's bowl anymore. Um, so you've got, and this is 19, this has to be not after 1952, and I know that because there's a teapot there. The Brittany teapot was not created until after, or I think it was created in 1952 by uh, Don Schreckengost. Uh, so here we have simultaneously the trade sizes and the actual sizes being used. So the whole point of this video is don't get too hung up on these trade sizes. Um, just know that the 24s is your common piece. 
because as we move forward with these videos, I'm going to start referring to these trade sizes more. And when we go back and start revisiting these older shapes, uh, I'm going to start talking about uh, the 24's jug in particular and how common of a piece that was. Now, one other thing before we wrap this up. I want to talk about the 30's and 36's bowl. So let's move these guys for a minute. A 30's and 36's bowl. This one's Hudson. That's a 30's bowl. And let's do this one. This is Republic. That's a 36's bowl. Again, this has nothing to do with, oh, I can put 30 of those in a crate and 36 of those in a crate. This has to do with their relative size. I can give you 30 of these for a dollar. I can give you 36 of those for a dollar. The 36's bowl is a very common bowl. Now, sometimes it's called a cranberry bowl. And I'm not how that, exactly sure how that started. I believe it was through Replacements Limited. Um... I will never call it a 36's bowl from here on out. I will, um, let me back up. I will never call it a cranberry bowl from here on out. From here on out, I will only call it a 36's bowl. Um, to call it a cranberry bowl almost implies that you fill it up with cranberries, you put it on the table, and it becomes like a serving piece, like a gravy boat or a platter. These would have been meant for soups or cereals or oatmeal. Um, interestingly, in the older shapes, like the fancy embossed shapes and those prior, they were called oyster bowls, 36's oysters, to differentiate from the 36's oatmeal bowls. But the 30's bowls are somewhat uncommon compared to the 36's bowls. Not very many shapes had the 30's bowls after, you know, you know, once you get to, let's say, I believe Empress might have been one of the last ones to have a 30's bowl. I have to look that up. But most of your fancy embossed shapes will have it. Like I said, this is Hudson. Uh, here's another one, uh, Angelus, the larger size, 30s bowls. But 36s bowls continued on for a while. They're roughly 5 inches in diameter. They're roughly um, 3 inches tall, although they can vary. Uh, we're going to look at some right now. This is the marigold shape 36s bowl. That's pattern W134. Virginia rose shape. 36's bowl, that's pattern 137, W137. You're going to see a pattern here in a minute. Um, this is a Harlequin 36's bowl in rows. This is a Fiesta Red 36's bowl for Harlequin. Uh, this is a Trellis 36's bowl. Pattern W132 on Yellowstone, Pastel Rose uh, 36's bowl. Blue Willow 36's bowl using the uh, Empress shape. Gardenia 36's bowl, that was made for Woolworths. This is Woolworths red and black trim 36's bowl on Nautilus Ivory. We have Mexicana on a, with blue stripe on, let's see, Nautilus Eggshell 36's bowl. Uh, we've got Applique, which would have been from the 1950s. This is pattern number A102 on a 36's bowl. And we can go on and on. This is a Century 36's bowl with Columbine, made for Woolworths. This is Wells Art Glaze 36's bowl uh, in leaf green. And uh, VR128 36's bowl, GC Murphy. So most of these 36's bowls were actually have Woolworth patterns on them. Woolworth loved the 36's bowl. So if Homer Lachlan made a line for them, generally there was almost always a 36's bowl. I'm not suggesting that every 36's bowl ever made was made for Woolworths, but a lot of them were. As a matter of fact, we look at this Willow 36's bowl, and maybe you can see it, it says FW Woolworth 20 cents, so it still has its price tag on it. So that's, that's a little bit about trade sizes. I hope it wasn't too confusing, I hope it made sense. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm enjoying making them. They're a nice little distraction from what's going on in the world. Um, and I will continue to do so. Make sure you press like and subscribe on YouTube. And uh, that's going to be it for today. Trade sizes.